May 18, 2016 meeting of the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Oshkosh. Would you please take the roll call? Felter? Birmingham? Here. Cummings? Here. Hintz? Lasky? Here. Pearson? Here. Stan? Here. First on the agenda is a presentation of an award to Archie Stan. I'd like to, I'll even stand. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sitting all day. But. Does it come with money? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a low budget. No, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you're the one okay, paying. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I'd like to present the Citizen Service Award to Hershey Stan for his 10 years of service on the Redevelopment Authority and the other boards and commissions he has served. We thank you for your time and contribution to the City of Oshkosh. Thank you, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> first on the agenda are two consent items uh, first is the approved minutes on March 16 2016 meeting Moved. motion in a so second moved. so move to approve second. second any discussion would you take the roll please it's just consent. Oh, okay. consent. Voice. So, voice vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Next, we have receipt of claim filed with the RDA slash Cities Insurance Company, Mint Properties for Alleged Sewer Backup Damages at 608 Central Street. Motion and a second. This was just uh, informational. Yeah, um, the property adjacent oh, yeah. to this is owned by the Redevelopment Authority, and they filed with the city, so we're just letting you know <coughs> that there was a claim filed um, in case it does come back that the RDA may be liable and needs to be submitted to our insurance company. This is part of the process to submit it to the insurance company. We don't have Correct. to take action at no. Right. No, no action at this point. Is it's just informational. Is, is there an opinion? No, there would not be an opinion until it's submitted to the insurance company. Okay. Investigation. Yeah. But I can tell you it had to do with the cross connection. Correct. Alleged. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You sound like Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> Who taught me that? <laughs> Moving on, under new business, we have a public hearing for spot, spot blight designation, 458 West 6th Avenue. Move it. Second. We don't take a vote, though, do we? It's a nope. public hearing. It's we have to go public to public hearing. hearing. Yep. Right. We'll close it. That is the former walleye pub, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Next, we have resolution 16-08, approved spot blight designation, accept donation of property at 458 West 6th Avenue. Motion and second. Can we have a motion yet? Sorry. Because they didn't have to. I was jumping ahead. Oh, that's okay. okay. They don't have to motion. The public comment or discussion? No, this makes sense. I like the city's recommendation. I have asked David Buck if there is any historical significance to that building because of its location in the, in the bloody Sixth Ward. So, still should come down. Right. Would you take the, the, the roll, please? Birmingham? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Lasky? Aye. Pearson? Aye. Sam? Aye. Six Next is re resolution 16-09, grant utility easement and release utility easement 400 block of Marion Road. Motion and a second. Move approval of 1609. A second. Discussion or public comment? This is just essentially changing from the original drawings because of the different use of the land than was anticipated then? Is that? Well, the storm sewer was replaced uh, a block to the west. 
so we don't need that storm sewer easement oh uh, okay so it goes it follows the sidewalk of the new park that we're building mm -hmm. there between block to the west like so that's releasing the storm sewer easement okay because we don't need that one that's basically been abandoned and filled uh, the grant of the easements on the north side are for those private utilities AT&T Time Warner to provide service to those customers okay where's the park being built a uh, little triangle piece right here and I'm, it's oh. a sidewalk and then there's going to be a little seating area and we're making room for sculptures down at that yes. little park along the river walk very nice There's no further discussion. Would you please take the vote? Birmingham? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Vince? Aye. Lasky? Aye. Pearson? Aye. Sam? Aye. Grade 6. Final resolution is 16 10, approved land disposition at Franklin Street and Ida Avenue. Motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Discussion? Is there any, uh, I, I just, you, you, this whole thing about never sell real estate is going through my mind. So is there is there any, uh, I understand the, how it makes sense to add it to the property next door so that there is a yard there. Is there ever, do we don't see anything on the horizon that would cause us to do, uh, I'll, we'll buy all of the or some of the to make a bigger piece for development in that lot or is this, is, this was just one of those next door to one of those blighted lots that we tore down, right? Yes. Yeah. In fact, the property to the south uh, here, they recently recited their uh, house. It looks very, very nice now. Uh, and the Loftons have put improvements into their property, so I can't imagine acquiring those properties and demolishing them ever. Okay. But this Not in the next 25, 30 years. This young couple bought this house, which had been converted to a two-family They've converted it back to a single family. It's next door to the small park we put in after the house on Frank, Franklin Ida burned down. So I think this, this is what we want to see in our older neighborhoods where homes are con being converted back to their original purpose, which was a single family. And by giving these people, or not giving it, by selling this land, it'll give them more space for their children and so forth. So it's, it's what we're looking for in all of our neighborhood uh, programs. So. It also makes it consistent with the block, looks like. Yes. Yes. So it puts that piece back where it should be. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing they squeezed the house onto that at one <laughs> point. Yeah. I, I'm curious about the sentence, of the small parcel in question could be retained as part of the public space. What, I understand that, but what what is meant by that? Uh, if we wanted to keep the public space as big as possible, <coughs> you could retain it. And we could use it probably for a little playground equipment that would be open to everybody. Uh, but instead, if the if we grant it to the, sell it to the Loftons, then they'll put their own improvements on the property. Okay. So what you're saying is, if we don't approve it, that would be still re remain as, as open public. We got yes, it. it would. Right. You know, I was trying to. Uh, I kind of said reckon, backwards. Reconcile right. how we could sell it and have it still be public space uh, there. Yeah. Got it. But from a planning standpoint, it makes sense to hook it onto the Lofton's lot. I yes, yes, I believe so. I talked to her last night at a neighborhood alliance meeting, and she was mentioning that the neighbors had done some upgrades to their house, and now they're all excited about doing more to their house, which is exactly what we want to happen in these older neighborhoods. So and that goes for the other urban spa uh, green space we put on the other corner in Middle Village. Central and Parkway. Yeah. Yep, they've already made improvements in those houses surrounding that space as well. So we've gotten the effect that we've, we're after. Would you please take the roll? Birmingham? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Lasky? Aye. Pearson? Aye. Stan? Aye. Period six. On our agenda now, we have a discussion about the acquisition policy, and there's a sheet in the back. Yes, if you recall, at the last RDA meeting, uh, we got into a discussion regarding the criteria we should be using for for acquisitions, and there were a lot of ideas. I attempted to put those down on paper for people to start reviewing them. I looked at back at other acquisition projects and the things that 
seem to be have been stressed on those acquisitions. Uh, so those were kind of summarized in bullet points one through five. But on the second page, you can see there's a lot of different criteria that you could be using for something like an acquisition policy. Uh, one thing I didn't highlight was that we, in the, when it comes to the city's acquisition, they're almost always vacant because the relocation costs make it very, very permanently expensive to acquire a property that has tenants or owners to be moved. So that's almost a given. It's almost got to be vacant. Otherwise, it's almost unaffordable for the city in today's day and age. But the rest of them regarding the blighted, blighted conditions of the structure and the location that's in the costs, the potential reuse and the impact on the neighborhood. Those are all kind of factors that I've seen in all the discussions that we've had. So I wanted to highlight those. And if there's any that are a higher priority or a lower priority, I guess that's what I'd be looking for uh, any kind of feedback from the, the RDA commissioners here. As far as within this list of five bullets, the priority in order, or in addition to these potential other things, these are the ones that like I, I think you did a really good job of putting this together. So, I mean, it, may, it really encompasses a lot of our conversations in the past few years. The only thing that I would say is I think that we talk more about the potential impact in neighborhoods above cost sometimes. So I would say we can move five and three if they're looking to reprioritize the order of. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. What kind of priorities? And blighted is a condition preceding to our doing anything. I mean, we can't own anything unless it's blighted. So Correct. That's a statutory requirement. You've got to either blight it or it's got to be part of the redevelopment area. Right. Spot blight it. Yeah. Thank you very much for putting this together. Um, but I think we're, we're, we're at the beginning uh, in, in terms of trying to work all of this out. Um, you know, I began to think of the acquisitions that we have made and different parts of the city and uh, developed a headache very <coughs> sort uh, th through everything here. Um, you know, I guess th th just a couple of quick comments that may be the easy ones. Uh, we can differentiate between what uh, is of, of immediate uh, city purpose, such as the um, junction of, of Sawyer and Oshkosh Avenue when we were making a purchase there because it had an effect on our transportation and uh, access there as opposed to uh, picking up a, a, a blighted property in a, in a neighborhood uh, where the purpose is a more general one of maintaining the neighborhood and so I would give probably highest priority where we can establish that there's an extra city purpose for, uh, for acquiring it. Um, where, I'm having, where I'm having a little trouble thinking this out is where we have done the real spot blights, um, you know, some off of, you know, the house on Merritt, uh, and then of course the house on, on Bowen that uh, we think we're actually going to cover our costs on uh, there and I suppose they should get even higher priority if you think you can cover your costs there um, but obviously we're we're engaging in trying to see that um, you know a neighborhood that may face some stress um, you know we're eliminating a particular problem there and surely that's a that's a good idea. I mean, that's kind of the triage model. But then we go over onto the the near south side, some of which is in the in the redevelopment zone there. Um, you know what? What are we ultimately doing with that that property? I mean, I think some of our reaction at the last meeting was we're just kind of picking up places, particularly on the south side there. Um, Where, where, where does that kind of property and acquisition policy fit with, say, on the north side, you know, north of Merritt, where the housing is fundamentally sound, but we have to deal with some bad spot blight at, at times there. And I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. 
refresh my memory, which one on the south side you'd be talking well, about? Well, I was thinking of a whole bunch of ones that we, I, I mean, the south side, you know, the near south side, uh, is begin to look a little bit like a war zone uh, in terms of properties that have come down, um, you know, pockets here and there and empty lots, but yet still a fair amount of housing in that area, although a lot of that housing looks a little distressed. Mm -hmm. And we're likely to get some more there. I mean, is it, uh, and I suppose it comes down to simply a sort of a basic philosophy. I mean, do we take an area such as the near south side and really try to pick up all properties as they come available with the idea that at some point, we, some point in the not too distant future, not in the 50 year time, frame that we can actually put land together that could be used for something else or do we focus our efforts on places where there is quite a bit of good housing in the neighborhood but then a couple of properties that have really gone down to the point of, of, of demolition now obviously we do both if we had an unlimited amount of money but um, I don't, don't think we have that and you know, and the other the other aspect of this is how much are you willing to pay for these different kinds of kinds of property? And it, I'm thinking that maybe as we <coughs> work this out, that we can come up with some guidelines that would try to take into account all of these. One, huh? one of the things I was going to observe. It one of the innovations of this administration in the Economic Development Department has been uh, the, the point system for evaluating the need for TIF districts, uh, a scoring process. Now, I am fully cognizant of the fact that you cannot quantify everything. I mean, I know there are criteria for the divine blight, but uh, maybe in a very I'm just wondering, in a very loose way, could there be a scoring system using those five criteria uh, uh, categories? And when something comes to us, we have a, 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 a quantifiable score to look like, look at, pardon me, and then get into a discussion of it. I mean, you know, we, you, quite frankly, you know, many people feel that blight is in the eye of the beholder, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, I agree, Jason, with your point about moving uh, the prior up the priority of potential impact on the neighborhood. And I think that was one of the points you were getting to, Steve. I mean, we're in a situation here where um, there are neighborhoods that uh, basically, we want to preserve, uh, and that means dealing with the, the spot blight there. But if we were looking at some other parts of the city, um, we're really not trying to preserve parts of them as neighborhoods. We're trying ultimately to uh, clear them out and, and probably redevelop them. Mm -hmm. And the question is, where, where should our priorities be? Um, how much would we be willing to spend? And how much are we willing to pay uh, uh, there? I mean, one of them, um, you know, probably going to be a little less expensive. And well, I don't even know that, but we probably have a better idea of what a preserved neighborhood looks like than we do what a fully redeveloped piece of property is going to be. But it seems to me we got to work, we need to think pretty hard about which way we want to go. It's interesting, Steve. I think you did a good job of defining the problem we're sitting with very well. But not offering a touch solution. But I think that in some ways the solution exists as the commission is purposed. And that we have to have flexibility, but we also have to have some set of structure. And the flexibility provides conversation for the room, and that's where the commission has the power to make the difference. And, and I think that the discussions 
that we have do take everything you're saying in consideration. I think what we've asked for is, is how do we know, how do we get better guidance, or how do we get a better foundation of our values here? But I think that the problem with that is that sometimes that can put too much of a box around what we really need is the flexibility. And I think that that's what we do here, is that we, it, through conversation and through the discussion of each independent thing that the city seems mm -hmm. you know, worthy to bring to the attention, um, it's vetted. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and, and I appreciate that because I, I think you're right. I mean, we don't want to we don't want to box our, ourselves in, but it, it still seems to me that there are, there are sort of fundamental thrusts in uh, w which way which way you're going to lean. I mean, I'm assuming that if a property comes up in an area that is essentially going to be a teardown and redevelop that you know if it's really an inexpensive property that we might we might pick it up we might invest more money in uh, a, a, a neighborhood that we're trying to maintain but um, I just think it's a good idea if we if we're sort of all on the same page in terms of the general orientation about what it is that we want to um, you know, promote. Uh, Personally, we're trying to do both at the same time. Yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> do we? Uh, yeah. We well, have only the three reasons why we purchase real estate that I can see. Number one is to amass a big enough parcel to offer it for redevelopment. And that's all those little lots on the near south side, yeah. you know, west of Main and east of Oregon Street. Then there's the uh, Oshkosh Avenue and Sawyer Street intersection stuff and that's because it really makes good sense for the community as a whole and then there's this little lot on Ida Street or wherever that's it makes sense to improve a neighborhood so all three of those things have have a different purpose to them um, and, I, and I think all three of them are are perfectly appropriate things for the redevelopment authority to do. We may need to prioritize those purposes, but in thinking about this whole concept after reading the agenda over the weekend, I, I would tend to not want to make a policy. I would tend to say guidelines, because policy, policy is never a problem, you know, and the best measure of what's a good idea is what I think is a good idea, and everybody else at the table is the same, but policies tend to, I think, if there's somebody who really objects to something happening, we're going to get into a wrangle about, about whether we have the authority to or not, or whether it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. Um, we just may need to prioritize Though among those three things, like, is there anything else? Any other reason we've done any, any uh, purchased anything other than um, you know a, a mass makes sense for the city and, and clean up a bad spot in the neighborhood? Do we have the authority? I mean, there are certain neighborhoods in town that were modest when they were built, spent the last hundred and plus years deteriorating. They're on substandard lots. There's, they're almost beyond repair. And do we have the authority to designate designate an area as blighted? Take it down, and then Ellen, you and I have talked about yeah. this. Offer that area up to a developer or an architect uh, to basically design an infield architecturally to go into an older section of town that the architecture would be somewhat compatible with the surrounding area, but we're starting fresh. The lots are too small to build anything on. Out of two lots, you might get a 100-foot lot, maybe, or an 80-foot lot. But design kind of the ultimate infield community to go within an older section of town. And yes, the, the we could do that. We, we can do that. The RDA could do that. But i got to couch that in. You'd have to acquire that property. Mm -hmm. And if there's tenants <coughs> involved, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars of acquisition and relocation costs, if not a million right. dollars. I mean, so I don't want to talk people out of th dreaming big, but we have a budget that we have to live with so it's usually in a slow process rather than something overnight and uh, as we've done in the past it's always been vacant properties or at least typically have been vacant properties a few years ago we did acquire and relocate and that is 
every time you describe it to me we don't want to do that anymore because it cost the city so much money in the past but it, it is doable it is definitely doable yeah, some the of these homes you come you know vacant it I mean some absolutely it, don't have to drive down some of these streets to realize that some of these houses are they're, they're it's not really what we're in. doing in in South Shore in Marion Road I mean in all of these redevelopment zones that we have that's what we're doing yep. we tend to I think we've thought about it as commercial redevelopment industrial commercial right industrial more so than let's build a new neighborhood um, right. but essentially it's the same thing but just the difference between a, a neighborhood and a commercial bent as we envision this this would be a neighborhood of single-family homes so not not apartments but it would just be new homes in the old neighborhood but it's a whole the whole neighborhood is redone at one time it's a it's a valor approach I mean the reality of it like Alan said is much more complicated in acquiring the properties especially in to Doug's point blight is in the eye of the beholder mm -hmm. and when you're told that your neighborhood just got blighted you sit in the middle of a <laughs> mess there and you don't really agree oh, that's that, true. That's that brings true. up a big issue <laughs> and and so um, I don't want to stop the conversation from going big but I think that what you're saying in some ways should be on here on this list and that's going to be the economic impact of redevelopment that's going to be the tax base because I think that you need to look at that every time we look at what that's going to do as part of the equation so In both directions. I mean, what's the plus? The plus versus is it a break-even? Is it a loss? Or is it a is it a gain? Yeah, sometimes a break-even is the best gain you can ever hope for, <laughs> which is just fine. Short term. The other thing that's actually I've been here. They've, these have all been voluntary offerings uh, for the properties. The city hasn't condemned anything since I've been here, and I think it's been very, very rarely used by the city in the past. Uh, that is always a possibility, but that is something that I don't rank very high on the list of things of the priorities uh, when it comes to the criteria we should be using. That should be one of the last criteria, in my opinion, we should be using. We have to condemn for the property. Further discussion? I, I, I propose to rework this and maybe come back with some more exploration of the ideas I've heard tonight and I'll put it on the next agenda to continue the discussion and maybe get it closer to something people understand as guidelines and criteria that we want to use and I can even go down seeing where we could maybe come up with a point system I helped develop the TIF point system and see if people like that or we could completely reject it after you see what I've craft. Steve, I, is there a way that what I heard from you very, I think, clearly was that, that when we talk about some of these areas, a lot of our discussion even at the table is um, when we first started buying properties in this area, what was the idea we were doing? And, and there's yeah. sometimes we lose history, sometimes we lose perspective, sometimes we lose scope, and then we end up with these pocket houses all over. And, and I think maybe if, if there's a way that we can document the intentions a bit more, there may be a better way to look through and review and say, you know, as a reminder, because the people at the table change. Mm -hmm. And sometimes My projects can take numbers there. of years to happen. Oh, yes. I mean, I, 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 I think both what you and John have said uh, makes sense, you know, in terms of not being rigid, um, seeing what comes along. But I guess maybe what I'm saying is that um, independent of any immediate decisions that we have, that we have a clearer idea of what it is that we're trying to do in the city uh, in terms of certain geographic areas you know what what is the the total redevelopment versus what is the preservation strategies and maybe even just talk about um, what's the best way for 
cities to approach these kinds of, of issues. I mean, I know that there are some states, of course, that have adopted triage models with entire communities in terms of where the where the money goes. And in some cases, they say bad enough that we're not going to do anything with, or we're going to put our money into the middle category there. And I don't think that our situation is like that, but I do think that our situation in Oshkosh is, uh, is something that we, we preserve uh, essentially now on a case-by-case -case basis to see that there aren't problems in good neighborhoods. And we do other things, as, as I think is coming along here, versus a situation where we really are looking at something where we know that it's a very long time perspective or an uncertain time perspective. You know, what's, but, you know, at some point it'll all be done and, and we would hope that it looks good. But I do think that if we can have some, at least more discussion of kind of an overall direction or vision that we, we might take on these kinds of things, it, it might just be helpful as we make the individual. Mm -hmm. I don't have the answer. <laughs> it's mostly it's just question. mostly just trying to figure it out, right? I got a quick question here yeah. that kind of dovetails this this walleye's pub that we're looking at now. The city will own that property. Mm -hmm. Once that's demolished, will that be offered up for sale? For yes. Some? Okay. Absolutely. And how is that done? Is that advertised? Uh, yes. We can okay. put a sign up and we'll put it on the city's okay. website as available and. My expectation is we'll get some interest from either neighbors who want to build something or add on, or it could be a private developer. Uh, periodically we get approached by other partners like Habitat for properties the city might own or they could do a project on. So uh, we'd have no intention of holding that for anything more than redevelopment for that one parcel. Does it keep its commercial status at that point? Uh, let's see. My expectation is we would rezone it to residential if it's not already zoned residential, and I don't remember what the zoning is. I Does the RDA have an opinion in that? Absolutely. They do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. That location is about a block from the new park? A block from the new park. That was one of the big things about it, yes. It was sort of like an entrance to the new Boat Works Park and mm -hmm. development, and we're looking at offering that one section of the Boat Works property for redevelopment, and that would be a plus for any potential development. So, let's see. Oh, it is zoned R2. So it could be built, rebuilt residentially. Alan, as they, as they do so often in my business, when someone asks for something, you figure out when you've done it before, who else has done it that you can steal it from. Is there... Um, Good for that. Uh, <laughs> which I meant yeah, facetiously. So if... Of um, course. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, you know, does Appleton, Fond du Lac, somebody, other RDAs have any kind of guidelines? Criteria? No, nope, we've worked all over. You have? Okay. Yes. All right. That was my question. I'm that lazy. I will look for anybody who's already <laughs> done that kind of thing. Why don't you join our firm? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just kind of give credit to people who've already done the research right. and, and make it work. At, you can learn from others, right? Exactly. No, it was really tough to find anybody who has anything on a Google search that has criteria for an, a redevelopment process. So I kind of looked at our own history to come up with uh, six points and then the other page, everything else we've considered when it comes to acquiring any property. So that's a Oshkosh original. Good. Mr. Davis, it's your turn. Okay. I uh, wanted to highlight just a couple of things. Uh, one Oshkosh. I wanted to make sure everybody got a copy of the one Oshkosh activities. This is uh, the city's and our partners attempt to show what everybody's going to be doing in the city to help our neighborhoods. And uh, I is Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Incorporated. They're going to be uh, in front of the council next Tuesday to uh, 
sign an agreement with the city to provide the nonprofit activities for market and image and community building, improving physical conditions and uh, neighborhood management. So I think we're making a nice step in the right direction with the uh, nonprofits and we're getting more of our partners involved with the uh, neighborhood programs with the housing authority and uh, habitat. So I like the direction we're going with the uh, uh, neighborhood revitalization. It just keeps growing in the right direction. Uh, and then I can just maybe touch on a couple of things on my executive director's report. Since I wrote this report, the city has received a $150,000 grant from WDC for the Buckstaff oh, demolition. Good. Uh, that's also on the agenda for next Tuesday's council meeting. That I'm not sure the council even has seen the agenda yet. That just got put together today. Uh, so that'll be on the agenda for next Tuesday for the council to accept the the, the deal and amend that a little bit. Uh, the one thing that the city is going to have to do, since WDC could only give us 150 out of the million they have statewide, uh, the city's had to come up with some other funding for to match the uh, 150 that we don't have. And fortunately, uh, Ms. Brandt has de been doing a good job identifying those uh, other grant funds that we could cobble together to, to make the project happen. So that'll be in front of council next Tuesday night and hopefully we'll start seeing the deconstruction here in June then. It needs the 300000 to go away. It still needs the 300000 We only got 150 yeah, so, you so the city's going to have to come up with the other 150 without a other out of some other grant funds uh, that we've been able to identify. Well, plus the money from the bank. And Oh, the money on from the bank and the owner is already on the table. That's that's a given. So we're not losing that. So the 300 is over and above the money from the bank. Absolutely. We were hoping to cover all of it with WDC funds, we're going to only get about half of it covered by state funds. Yeah. What's the um, cost to bring it down to where you need to bring it? Oh, it's around nine hundred thousand okay, so dollars. Very, very close now. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned a little bit about the Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative. Uh, Boatworks. Uh, we're looking at our grand opening celebration for the Boatworks Park uh, June 16th at 4 p.m. and I'm sure you'll be getting more information on that before uh, it actually occurs. Good news on the Morgan District uh, River Walk. Uh, we continue uh, work on the east side of course if you've been by there you'd see the the equipment there on the east side uh, but we came in well under budget for that side of the, the project and DNR recently gave us the authorization to proceed with the sheet piling west of Oregon uh, so we're going to continue with that contractor. We won't have to remobilize and they'll be able to continue work and we'll be able to use all the grant funds that DNR gave us for that project. And in the meantime, we've applied for additional funding to install the trail on top of the sheet pile and go as far west as we can uh, towards Boatworks uh, with the next round of grant, that the next grant application we put into DNR and that would be announced sometime at the end of this summer and hopefully we can continue that either late 16 or start that in 17. So another another section will be under construction this summer, and hopefully we're getting lined up for next year's construction. Uh, we still haven't heard about uh, a Morgan District specific uh, WEDC grant called the Idle Sites uh, uh, grant, and we're hoping to hear about that here in June as well. And we're optimistic that'll help that project build their first building in the near future. We're continuing to work with Mr. Dumke on Pioneer area. He's exploring multiple options, and I'm cautiously optimistic he's going to get good results of some of the research he's been, been doing. Uh, Mr. Dumke uh, wants to retain his liquor license, and he sent a nice uh, email to the city manager explaining his plans about the historic renovation of the granary and his plans to develop a new restaurant. So that still continues uh, to be planned for. He still wants to uh, acquire the lot from the RDA Kitty Corner to provide parking for that granary re redevelopment. Did we authorize the lease of that property? Uh, we parking? didn't authorize. We, we said we would we would Senator accept that, but we didn't. Yes. Did we, we say we, we actually put a long term? You you haven't put yeah, he wasn't sure if he wanted to acquire or just a long term lease. So okay. he was just kind of waiting till he got his plan more finalized. And but we did, but did we did give him at least mm -hmm. enough indication that said yes, we would entertain the the parking lot that he would need. Uh, let's see, Rivers 1.5 is under construction right now. That's the four story building going up right now. That's the where the little park area is going to be constructed beside. Uh, so that's good. 
Uh, then the Jackson Marion parcel, that's the one there at the very corner of Jackson and Marion and the river. Um, Andy Dumkey continues to work on that project, and that's everything from commercial um, to mixed use uh, types of, of uses. So, looking at every op uh, alternative. And I've been told the water tower consultant is getting very close to finishing their de design on that. And I know we've promised to bring that back to RDA, and hopefully, we'll hear that in the next month or two. So, we'll have that on your next agenda if they're completed with that, because I think they want to still construct that starting here in 2016. That's all I have, Mr. Right. Chairman. Anything else? What's now on the agenda, the welcome signs that we've been discussing for five years are in fabrication, and they will be going up, installed um, in June for the gateway. So. Tickets or a wave? Uh, the design? No, it's, <laughs> it's the... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the, uh, not the new Oshkosh logo. When I first became mayor, I was getting more and more mail, and we had 101 different variations of the logo, and literally 101 different variations. And I said, we just, we just need one. So we had Dan at the library clean it up. So it's the wave, and we've, we've put the light blue in the top where it belongs, and the dark blue. I mean, he said the sky should be light blue, water should be, over time it just, it just says City of Oshkosh, in some cases it'll say establish 1853. So it's just very clean, but they'll be illuminated and they'll be on, coming in on South Park uh, 21, 9th, and Algoma. And we're still trying to find a place on Jackson that's not DOT controlled, full of underground whatever is under in county owned so that's been a, a big task, a challenge. A to, challenge to follow my comment I appreciate the, the historical nod to the wave mm -hmm. so that's very nice it's, it's just cleaned up and consistent now so that I would look for a motion to adjourn in a second moved all in favor I adjourned <laughs>